With the major recent acquisitions of ExxonMobil acquiring Pioneer for $59.5 billion and now Chevron buying Hess for $53 billion, the oil and gas industry is heating up once again. I'm joined today by Wedgemount Resources President and CEO Mark Vanry to discuss the advancement of the production for their Central Texas oil and gas assets. Mark, welcome. Thanks for having me on, Brandon. I appreciate it. And thank you for coming on. Well, the last time you spoke with our team, you had said there should be a lot more growth to happen. And that's exactly what you've just announced with the commencement of your largest enhancement program to date. Can you walk us through what this is and what it means for your company? Yeah, absolutely, Brandon. We're excited about the uh, upcoming growth through the enhancement program. Uh, previously, uh, as we've announced the market over the past few months, we've been doing chemical treatments to our Willow Bend and Milliken wells and have been able to grow production on a very economic basis by about 500% since we took them over. Our second program here doing the much larger chemical enhancements of the reservoirs, really this almost acts like a frack on a conventional reservoir. We're really opening up the reservoirs to allow them to produce at hopefully much higher rates and over a, um, uh, a sustained period of time. So we will commence, we're actually commencing those this week. We're doing our initial 15 wells um, and we're optimistic that um, we can continue to grow the production. I'm not gonna say they're gonna grow another 500% like they have to date, but we're optimistic that those numbers will continue to increase number one, but overall we should be able to get better recoveries from the wells too, which is absolutely key into to growing the reserves of the company. So again, that kicks off this week and that program will go through the balance of the year end. Uh, 15 wells initially, and then on our new acquisition, we'll be doing uh, another nine wells um, early in the new year. Yeah, and that's a perfect segue as well, because that's a question that I'd like to ask you. You also recently mentioned that uh, you continue to target the closing of your previously announced TCS project acquisition on or before October 31st of this year. How will this acquisition boost your overall production? And do you have any estimates on how many BOEs per day you seek to be at by the end of the calendar year? Yeah, the... Um... Uh, the TCS acquisition, which uh, um, uh, I'll remind people is actually um, within a couple of miles of our producing assets. So it, it, it fits in very nicely within our core area as far as logistics, infrastructure, oil sales, you name it. It's, it's a really great fit for us. So that asset, when we announced it, uh, it was producing about 27 BOEs a day. That's all light oil production. That's not including any of the gas there. Um, when we actually take over the asset on October 31st, I think the production probably be a little bit higher than that, as we've seen some um, very basic ways in which to optimize some of the wells, everything from power to pumps, but very low cost ways to optimize. Once that, once we take over those assets on the 31st of October, uh, subsequent to the 15 well program that I just announced, we'll get into those wells. As far as growth from those wells, um, it's hard for me to say uh, based, uh, at this point in time, but I think if you look at what we've done with the Willow Bend and Millican assets, um, I'd be disappointed if we were not able to grow uh, the TCS assets uh, on the same percentage basis. So, you know, the initial assets, um, as I mentioned before, we grew about 500%. If we could get anything close to that, I'd be, be very happy. As far to, to address your question is where we'll be production wise by the end of the year. Um, it's hard to say right now, because as the program goes along, um, we have to turn off wells, some of our wells uh, in which to do the chemical treatments and the and the formation stimulations. But by the time we get everything back on, which would should be sometime around Christmas and the new year, I'd be disappointed if we couldn't grow production kind of 50 percent from where we are right now. But we'll, we'll have to see the reservoirs and the and the wells will tell us the story. But we're certainly optimistic we can grow to put an exact number on it right now would be, I think, uh, a bit a slightly premature. But again, Again, it, in, in our minds, we'd like to see a 50% bump in production. Um, it's possible that it's bigger than that. We'll just have to uh, have to wait and see. The Strategic Petroleum Reserve in the U.S. is at its lowest point in over 40 years, all while crude is now marching above $90 a barrel once again. What does the current macro environment look like for domestic supply and demand for oil? And how do you seek to further penetrate into this market? Yeah, uh, global supply and demand, that, that's always a tough one because there's so many different factors. But I, I just like to focus on, on, a, on a couple of, of key issues facing the world when it comes to 
uh, petroleum. Number one, the, the world is now consuming about 102 million barrels per day. Global declines are anywhere between 50 to 20 percent per year. So just to stay flat, the world needs to add to find 15 or 20 million barrels per day. So um, the you know, and outside of the shale basin of the U.S. Texas, which is kind of our backyard, there's been been very limited growth on a global basis of new supply. Um, the IEA has global consumption going to about 110 million barrels a day by 2030. So not only do we have to find enough oil to uh, counterbalance the declines in global production, we need to find about 8 million barrels a day uh, uh, of increased production just to meet global demand. So in, in our opinion, the supply demand fundamentals uh, are really solid and we're really excited about it going you know, out through 2030 and beyond. Um, currently, uh, another factor here is that lack of OPEC spare capacity. OPEC's really been driving this market as, as everyone is pretty familiar with, with the Saudi cuts and the Russian cuts, and they've been fairly disciplined on that. But if you actually look at the spare capacity for OPEC, they're at their lowest levels in, in, in really uh, over the last 20 to 25 years. So, you know, we think, again, lack of, uh, of, of large new projects coming on globally and OPEC discipline should keep us in, in pretty good shape. And right off the top, you mentioned the, strate the Strategic Petroleum Reserve in the U.S., which Biden uh, sold a lot of uh, last year. Um, gosh knows how they're going to refill that or what prices mm -hmm. they're going to refill that at. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we're, we're bullish on the fundamentals. There will be ups and downs like there always is in the oil market. But we tend to focus a little bit longer term. And we're really focused on that global demand of 110 million barrels a day plus over the next five to seven years. Yeah. And speaking on what you're focused on, acquire, optimize, exploit, and grow is your corporate strategy. Currently sitting at a $6.5 million market cap, what can investors expect from your company over the coming months in terms of potential catalysts and plans for uh, future, further growth? Yeah, uh, growth is really the focus right now. Uh, as we mentioned off the top, we've got our production enhancement uh, program kicking off, actually kicked off this week already. We expect uh, some fairly significant growth through just our current assets that we have. Again, we've got the two assets, Millican and Willowbend. As you mentioned, we're going to be picking, uh, closing the TCS acquisition, so I'll have a third asset. So I think Continued growth with our existing assets, with uh, optimizing the wells, chemical treatments, well workovers, you name it, um, that's going to enable us to grow quite significantly. At the same time, we will continue to look for assets in our core area that make sense for the company. Um, we've, we've closed three. We have a bunch more in our pipeline that we'd like to get to uh, in the first quarter of 2024. So I think you'll see continued growth both organically through the work we're doing in the field and additional acquisitions in our core area of Central Texas. Yeah, fantastic to hear. And once again, thank you so much, Mark. For anybody who's looking for more information, uh, information you can always look right down there. There's the link to your website, lots of information about your company. Mark, thank you so much for your time and look forward to speaking to you again in the near future as well. Thanks again. Thanks again, Brandon. Really appreciate your time as well. We're uh, excited about what we're doing and uh, we're, we'll be happy to give an update uh, later this year.